What's going on YouTube? This is yours truly, Adre the Plug, reporting live with some more technical heat. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button below. Make sure y'all hit that bell below so y'all can stay notified every single time I drop new technical heat. But let's get into it, man. Let's jump right back into these interviews. I just finished a whole bunch of sponsorship product videos, so definitely go check all of those out. Some of them I've never even seen in person, so I thought it was really, really dope. And then on top of that, also did a couple of electronic projects. So definitely go check out those previous videos I did. But now I'm about to jump right back into all my interview videos where I interview different people all across the country. Let's get into it, roll the clip. Hi, my name is Vishaka Malia. I'm a computer scientist from the University of Houston. I'm a cybersecurity engineer currently, and I'm also the CEO of a media agency. Okay, Vishaka, so why did you decide to choose this field? I chose computer science because I loved how magical tech was. I actually started off college as a music major, so I can play like six instruments and I can sing like crazy. But after being in music for a while, I realized the beauty of music itself was in the notes and the way you can create incredible sonatas and melodies just with the same eight notes. And coding is kind of the same. I fell in love with it after my brother graduated from University of Michigan as a computer scientist and he introduced me to coding, helped me help code my first Tumblr page. And from then on, I was basically hooked. I applied um, to the computer science field and, you know, was able to change my major. Uh, from then on, I started applying to different startup accelerators and, you know, history was made. All right, Vishaka, so what's your favorite coding language? My favorite coding language has to be Python. I really like that you're able to automate so many processes just with one script. Um, I've also worked a lot with C++ and in my time working with VR startups, I was able to see directly how you can use C++ and Unity to bring amazing creations to life. What do you feel is the biggest benefit being inside of this field, you know, the field of computer science other than music? The biggest benefit I feel from being in computer science is that the sky is the limit. With computer science and coding, you can basically create things that never existed before. The only thing that is an obstacle is the hardware that you're working with. And that too, nowadays, there are so many initiatives going to help marginalize children and students be able to get their hands on working class laptops. So they're able to create, you know, these amazing code spectacular programs and softwares, apps, and all the other cool things, games, movies, like it's crazy the amount of things that children are being able to achieve. And that was what drew me in the most, was being able to go onto Tumblr and like code my own website when I was 13, seeing how I could use CSS to change the way a website looks and then being like, oh my God, I can make this on a larger scale than growing up to be able to like use Android Studio, be able to code in Swift. Those I think were the most liberating moments for me being in tech and realizing that like this is something incredible, something new and going 10 years into the future, 11 years, 12 years, I'm 24 now, um, seeing the impact that tech has even more. We're seeing so many industry jobs, like industries like uh, the medical field, healthcare, so many oil and gas, everything is being like automated and every, you know, every situation and scenario is being taken to the next level with code and with tech, with these tech engineers. And it's amazing to see, it's amazing to be a part of and bringing it to everyday people. Oh, it's what I live for. What's something that you did not expect jumping into this field? What I did not expect going into this field is just to see how crazy bad the gender gap is. Seeing how little and how few women are employed in tech and just tech startups in general, it's a shame. And it actually, I feel, hurts even more when it's impacting students. So one of the reasons why I left the University of Houston was because a professor had a history, a professor I had had a history of assaulting his students, including me, and the university did not act appropriately. They did not fire him, even though multiple students were emailing the campus, the Equal Opportunity Service, Title IX office, nothing was done. And it was sad to see in a science space that a 
professor was able to get away with such harassment. Um, and then actually two years later, I got DMs from high school students saying that the professor now works at a, at a high school. It's, it's crazy. It is so crazy just to see how the tech industry is just so blind to the fact that men are able to get away with any anything and everything. It's sad. Um, I'm sure dozens of women who are watching this are agreeing with me, but I just, you know, wish that we could do more about it. And that's kind of why I'm here speaking up about it. Um, and whatever I do mention on my social medias or on other podcast interviews, it, I think, means a lot to everyone who's ever been put in an uncomfortable space in the workplace. As for the positive things that I did not expect that would come out of being in this field is being able to help so many marginalized creators get what they deserve from using tech products and using the internet. So one of the things I feel as engineers and techies that we don't realize and we don't remember enough is that our work is being touched by thousands of people across the world. This is high touch, high sensitivity materials that we're working on that have a direct impact into people's lives, whether you're an engineer, a software engineer, like an implementation consultant, there are so many ways that tech impacts people, just regular people. And it's when used in the right ways, it's beautiful and awe-inspiring and we're able to create such meaningful change. I love that and I love seeing ethical tech. It's one of my favorite industries. Um, my God, they're the, just the applications of tech alone could solve so much if, you know, the right people and the right ideas were behind it. So jumping into your side hustle at Davey Cartel, so what actually got you into the social media agency? I kind of touched on this before, but I was pretty obsessed with Tumblr when I was 13. That social media obsession didn't really stop. It just kept going. When I was 15, I started this anonymous meme account on Twitter and it was hilarious. That shit ended up in Buzzfeed and the news and it was so funny. But uh, yeah, I was pretty much amassing like a multi-platform empire from the time I was in high school all by myself from my bedroom. And that was when I realized like the power of social media and kind of everything exploded since then. Um, now I'm able to support many, many different kinds of creators who are on many different kinds of platforms and be able to monetize them and also protect them. These are the most marginalized kinds of creators. They're women. We work with women of color primarily, and we're able to help them even use Web3 initiatives to be able to privatize their content and make sure that they're making the most money off of their content as possible. We're doing this across literally so many platforms. We are so, so, so excited to keep growing. And the side hustle basically just like broke even this year. So we're excited to hopefully make a profit in the future and are actively looking for investors. But yeah, we're basically a company run by women, women for women. Um, and I think that's the most special part. It's we employ so many women and literally they have degrees it's amazing like we have someone who's a management information system bachelor degree um grad we have a marketing grad we like literally do so much we have someone who's in school for cybersecurity, who's literally getting their master's in cybersecurity, who's an executive manager here at Davy Cartel too. So it's just amazing being able to support women who want to support women and be able to like use their own individual spheres of knowledge, their spheres of influence to be able to drive change, like meaningful, meaningful change to people and services who deserve it. I think that's like incredible to me. I would have never gotten the support uh, to be able to even start this side hustle if I wasn't in contact and flourishing with other women in STEM. Um, and I think that's something to note as well. Like just my side hustle was really inspired by other women in STEM who were just like hustling so hard during the pandemic. Like it was just an honor to see like one of my models is a Vanderbilt research scientist. Like one of the girls I mentored is literally on the New York State Public Health Board um, working on getting cheap and affordable STD and STI testing to the underprivileged, underprivileged communities in New York. And these are people who are also sex workers. It's amazing to be able to support it just because women and sex 
work are inherently combined. Like seriously, in times of, you know, we're living through a pandemic, we're living through world, like possible World War Three. like this shit is real life shit. And we saw like thousands and thousands of engineers and scientists get laid off during the pandemic. And what were they able to do? Like tech wasn't there for them, um, but sex work was. And so being able to use my, and my uh, expertise as a techie, as an engineer, combine it with other women's expertise who are also techies, who are also engineers, be able to find a solution that will help the most marginalized populations, women, colored women, yeah that's amazing and that's why i do what i do basically now okay so what do you think is the next wave of social media tech i truly think the next wave of social media tech is just decentralizing the heck out of it stop giving so much power to the companies that inherently control everyone's data i think that is so wrong especially coming from an engineering background it really shouldn't be like this um, and especially if there are ways to ensure that it's not like that. Like Web3 initiatives are so important to making sure that everyday people own and are in control of their privacy, of their data, that no one is stealing them, that we're not going to live in some kind of big brother future because it's it's coming, it's coming sooner than we think. Bots are already, you know, affecting the way social medias are ran and maybe people in the engineering community don't know this directly, but right now with this Russia and Ukraine situation that's happening and it's absolutely terrible, but this has been affecting social media everywhere and it has been you know, deleting accounts left and right. It has been censoring people left and right. Like these are people's lives, their livelihood that depends on everyday social media. Like for some people, yes, social media is like fun and games, but for other people it's not. And I genuinely see Web3 helping the creators, whether it's whether it's uh, artists, whether it's graphic designers, whether it's NFT artists, whether it's uh, photographers, whether it's movie producers, all of these things can be made so much more accessible and so much more justly accessible with Web3. And I really hope and think this is a new wave, uh, just giving power back into the hands of the people. We see so many communities all across the world bogged down by unjust things. And Web3 is really the solution when you're decentralizing, taking away power from big banks, big government, big pharma, all of it. Like it's it's just what we need. And hell, we all see that Netflix subscription price rise every six months. Like I know you saw that shit, it's $20 now. Like, please can we decentralize movies and TV shows already? Why does it have to be like this? Where it's just like, you know, someone else buy, buys Time Warner Cable, then we get all the Marvel, all the Marvel movies, all the Harry Potter movies going to another platform are like, we just want to see our shit, right? Web3 can solve all of this. Web3 can make life so much more simple, more accessible. Like imagine if we could have courses wrapped up into a node and then give them to anyone in the world, then we really wouldn't even have to worry about people not being educated. Like there are so many different ways that we could be able to handle like the way information is stored and shared on the internet. So if we can just tackle that using Web3, you know, get the decentralization movement happening and going, then everyone will be so much safer, happier, making more money. Like that's, that's all anyone wants. All right, Vishaka, so what's some good tips that you would give somebody that, you know, want to jump into computer science? Let's say they're about to graduate high school and they don't have a clue what computer science is. What's some good tips? What's some good websites? What's some good resources? I say some good resources to probably getting into computer science or any tech related field, really. I would say start with figuring out what kind of lifestyle and what kind of I guess education plan works for you. Uh, me coming into computer science from another major, I was simply able to change my majors and hop into computer science as long as all the prerequisites were met, meaning I had the right grades, I had the right amount of credits, and I didn't have any prior wrongdoings with the school. Um, now, if you're coming straight out of high school and you're trying to figure out, you know, 
what's the difference between computer science and computer engineering? What do I pick? Uh, I would really suggest reaching out to the university that you're looking to apply to and reach out to their computer science and their computer engineering organizations. Um, they have outreach people, basically like every organization should have some kind of leader, whether that's a president, a vice president, or a faculty head that runs the organization and helps the students. You can reach out to either one of them and they, they'll be able to really outline the way that the courses are created on campus based on the different majors and which one would be better suited to you based on maybe the alumni network. I think that's very, very important. You should not go to a school if you have not looked at their alumni network yet, but they can help you based on their alumni network. Also how much funding each different major gets if the two majors, computer science and computer engineering are, are in different schools on campus. I think that's very, very important. And two, uh, and three, to look at the different research opportunities presented with each major. So if you're going into computer science, how many faculty do they have on the board that has active funding versus the other major, you know, what kind of projects are the faculty working on that maybe you could get a step ahead of the competition by going and working as a research scientist or going um, and working as an intern on their project to be able to get that little extra step to be able to really land that job after you graduate. All right, Vishaka, so as we close it out, tell the people your contact information so they can stay in touch with you. Y'all can find me over at goddessvv.com. Um, you can check at davycartel.com or davycartelmanagement.com as well. Um, that's basically where you'll be able to keep up with me. My Instagram gets deleted like every month. It sucks, but um, you can go to my OnlyFans at onlyfans.com slash my underscore D-E-S-I girl um, for me. And that's basically like the only site that I'm on like consistently. But hopefully I'll be launching my YouTube channel soon. Um, yeah, it's hopefully going to be linked in the description. So pop on over. Once I hit an X amount of subscribers, I will start posting my videos. But yes, um, thank you so much for being here and watching this interview. I had such a great time, dude. And that concludes this video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. It really do help my channel when it comes down to the YouTube algorithm. If you guys have any questions regarding anything, just hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on the gram, at Dre the Plug, one, two, three. And then also go check out my other YouTube channel. This is actually my second channel. My first one was called Andre Classic Cuts. I basically go in and give tutorials about all types of different haircuts. I actually show people how to do different type of things with the clippers that has never been done. And I pretty much go into detail as to why certain things happen. So definitely go check out that channel. Besides that, be on the lookout for my next content that's dropping. Be on the lookout for it because it's coming real soon. And I'm out.